I want to talk to you guys about working with opacity masks inside of Adobe Illustrator. Now, these have been around for a while, and there's some really cool things you guys can do with these. So I just want to take you through some of the really neat things we can get done. The way it works is if you take an object, let's say a picture, anything you want, and you put it out here, almost anything, <laughs> and you want to make it so that it's kind of transparent, but it feathers or fades using gradients. What we do is we create some kind of shape or group of shapes on top. I'm going to see right here that I've got a shape. And we apply a gradient to that shape. Now, it's a gradient fill typically. So if I press period on my keyboard, I'll, I'll get the last used gradient or last applied gradient, which is usually white to black. Now, the way this works is we are going to take this object and make an, basically an opacity mask out of it. So what's going to happen is where it's white, you're going to see the artwork. Where it's black, it's going to make the artwork transparent. So, and this isn't totally black. So what I'll do is I'll go up my gradient tool and just fix it up. I'll move it over a little bit. And let me just change this color. Yes, it is actually black. It look, doesn't look black to me. All right. So I select the object I want to use as the opacity mask. I shift click to select the object behind that I want to be masked. And then I come over to the transparency panel. Now, if you guys make a regular old clipping mask by right clicking or going to the menus and make a clipping mask, it's just going to treat this, this object here in front as a regular old mask, meaning it's going to literally hide anything outside of it, the picture outside of it. But if we go to the transparency panel and you go to the menu over here, you can choose make opacity mask. If it has a gradient fill, it's going to do just what it says. It's going to literally clip everything outside of that shape we created. White is going to show the artwork. And if you look right here, you're going to see black is going to make it transparent, the artwork. Now what's happening here is it's actually showing that blue behind. So if there's anything else behind here, you would see that right there. Now, if you look in the transparency panel, some really cool things we can do here. We have the thumbnail for the original artwork, and we have the thumbnail for the mask. You're not done. If you want to edit the mask, you can just click on the thumbnail for the opacity mask. It's a little weird, you guys, but it says opacity mask up here in the tab. And if you look in the layers panel, you'll see now it says opacity mask. And you'll see, if you open it up, there's the path right there. Now, we can go in and do a, pretty much whatever we want. I can rotate this thing. I can select it and you know, apply a stroke to it. I mean, if I want to, I can uh, change the opacity on it. If you look up here, go change the opacity on it. And you can do all sorts of really cool things to this. Now, like I said, we can also apply effects. If you go to the uh, appearance panel or you go to the effects menu, uh, it doesn't really matter. I mean, we can go to convert shape. I can do things like apply, I don't know, a blur to it, which is really kind of cool. You want to create some kind of neat effect. You can kind of blur and make almost like a feather on it. There's some really cool things we can do to this mask. Once again, we can also change the gradient itself. So if I hit G to go to the gradient tool, and I just make it shorter, longer, whatever, change direction, etc., I can change this up any way I want to. I can even go to the gradient panel, and it's using black and white here. Now, if I fill it with a different color, you're going to see it's still considering it to be black and white, you guys. That's the way it works. Let me undo. I'll go back to the gradient panel and choose something like a radial gradient, and you can do all sorts of really, really neat things here. But anyway, so we've got our mask going. Uh, it's, you know, going pretty well. I can also change it back to 100% up here opacity. I'm right up here, and you can see it's starting to change a little bit. Now, we can do some things like this too. You can tell it not to clip, which means don't clip outside, because right now everything outside of this shape is going to get clipped out, So it's meaning it's going to be... Uh, not not see-through, or see-through rather, sorry, I confused myself. You can also invert the mask, which is kind of neat. It inverts the inside here and shows you, well, here's the inside, here's the outside, etc., and does a little inverse. Now, one thing that's really cool about masks is, let's say you screw it up. I do this all the time, you guys. I'll make a mask, and I'll be like, ah, that looks like crap. You can always replace it. So if I come in here and just hit delete, you'll see there's still an opacity mask here. Now, if I get out, I'll just click out somewhere, click back on the thumbnail to edit the entire thing, to move it around, whatever. Come to another shape. You guys can use symbols, groups, whatever you want. I'll copy that or cut it. Click back on the object here. I need to edit the opacity mask. Right now I'm editing the actual whole thing. If I click back on the opacity mask, I can just paste, and it'll paste this new thing as the opacity mask. Now, even though this fish was colored, you guys, it's still using it as black and white. Like we said, if it's black, it's going to be see-through, transparent. If it's white, it's going to see the uh, the actual artwork. You're not going to be transparent. 
So I can change the size of this thing. I can do whatever I want. Now, what's really cool also about this is the fact that I can go in and do things like unlink these. If you click back on, and this is a mistake that a lot of people make, you guys. If you're working on the opacity mask and suddenly you want to go do something else, work with the flower over here, whatever, and you start clicking and you're like, well, I can't select anything. It's because you're locked onto the opacity mask here. You need to click back on the thumbnail for the original object. That kind of gets you out of that editing, editing mode. I can then go do other stuff. Okay, that happens all the time. I forget to do that. If I click back on this object and move it around, you'll see that they're linked together. So I got the picture and the mask linked together. Now I can change things like blending modes and you know all sorts of different stuff, whatever we want to do here. If you want to move the picture and the mask separately, you can always click on this little link icon, click and drag, and you'll see I can move the artwork or the image separate from the mask. All right, now if I click back on the mask, I can also move the mask separate from the image and that sort of thing. If you want to move them together, you click on the little link between them and you have to have the thumbnail selected, sorry. Click on the link between and you can link them back together so they both move together. Now just real quick, another thing we can do here, if you click back on the opacity mask, if you want to, let's say, see what it looks like without the mask, you can actually come to the mask icon here. This is very Photoshop, you guys. Shift click on the mask and it will just temporarily disable the mask. If you shift click on it again, you'll see it show up. That kind of just turns it on and off. Now, if I want to see just the mask on the page, this is a really cool thing, you guys. You can come to the little icon over here, the thumbnail, option on Mac, alt click on it, and you'll see just the mask out there. This is just like Photoshop. That allows me then to do things like this. Now, this is a symbol, you guys. If I were to update the symbol, this would change. But I'm going to come up here and just break the link to it. And I'm going to edit the different pieces and change the color, which will change the opacity. So now double-clicking, I can't get into the isolation mode, which is unfortunate because this is a group. So what I wind up doing is go to the selection tool, or rather the direct selection tool, click on objects, and just change the fill and the color and do things like that. So that's kind of neat. Now, if I want to get back out of this, I come to the thumbnail for the mask, Alt on Windows, Option on Mac, click on it, and you go back to the mask itself. There's tons of stuff we can do, you guys. We can invert the mask. We can do all sorts of really great things. Like I said, we've got the opacity change. I'm going to bring the opacity back up 100%. you got to be careful with that because sometimes you guys are seeing black out here and you're like, oh, it's not transparent. It's not this, that. You really have to be careful with what you've done because you've probably applied blending modes or something else going on. So... Anyway, the last thing we can do with the mask, if you want to release it, let's say you want to get rid of the mask and have the picture back, we can come to the transparency panel, click on the menu out here, and choose release opacity mask. And there we go. We're back where we were. A lot of great things you guys can do with an opacity mask. Groups, symbols, type you can use. you got to be careful with type. It's uh, Some weird things happen, but a lot of great things, you guys.